Hey everyone, it's Rosette, and I'm back today with another decoding. Uh, this one is another updated one um, on my Flat Earth Decoded Part 3, North Pole and Wizard of Oz connection. So this is an update to my March 2017 presentation on the connections between Mercator's map of the North Pole and the Wizard of Oz. So if you haven't already, watch my Flat Earth Decoded Parts 1 and 2 because Part 3 here builds off of them. Since doing those parts, I had come across more info that showed the significance of the North Pole as hidden in the esoteric classic The Wizard of Oz. Remember, all these secret societies that hoard the hidden knowledge about our world communicate in symbolism. They put the truth out there in a way that their adepts know the meaning, but the profane have no clue. But the more we uncover, the more we know too. Knowledge is power, as the saying goes. Let's take the power back by learning what they know. So let's start by taking another look at Mercator's map of the Arctic, which was first printed in 1595, with this edition printed in 1623. In Mercator's letter to John Dee, he describes the land at the North Pole. He says that it is surrounded on all sides, except for the north, with very tall mountains that reach the clouds and are free from vegetation. The land is divided by four rivers that flow with a very strong current northwards. Now the wonderful Wizard of Oz first came out as a book by L. Frank Baum in 1900, 277 years after Mercator's map. So the secret could have been passed down to him. And we know that 169 years after Mercator, Catherine II of Russia heard about the land of the north by the Masons. Now what are the chances that L. Frank Baum was a Mason too? I would say pretty good. He went by the odd writing of his name, initial L, then middle name Frank, then Baum for a reason. Frank Baum is 33 in numerology, the favorite number of the Masons. Now the L is significant too. L is phonetically L, E-L, as in a name for God. But which God? God 33 would be Lucifer. Remember, 33 is the year in which the followers against Christ, against Christ, or Antichrist, manipulated the Roman Pontius Pilate to have him killed. Notice, too, that Baum uses Masonic orange on the cover of his book. Orange is the only color that adds up to 33 in numerology. And we know 33 degrees Fahrenheit is the temperature where ice melts, where the secrets are revealed. And Oz is a nickname for both Osiris, who was the Egyptian lord of the underworld and judge of the dead, as well as one for Australia. Oz, the land down under. So the Wizard of Oz would be the Wizard of the Underworld, or Hell. So would that be wonderful? The wonderful world of Oz? Maybe if you're a Luciferian. Now if we look at Baum's map for Oz, we notice he marks the area we would call the North Pole as the Land of Oz. Now this would be classic inversion. We know this land is connected to God, that he sits on his throne above it, and below him is where the Garden of Eden is. 
So it would be opposite of anything resembling an underworld, right? But we can see that the features are very similar to Mercator's map. We have land on the outer perimeter, then a desert area, then four lands with a mountain in the very middle. Now we notice that these outer lands encircle the inner portion on all sides but one, just like on Mercator's map. Mercator has mountains on all sides but one as well, and this one area is in the same location. Notice too that if these desert areas were just considered flatlands of each island, like on Mercator's, and if what is separating the four would be rivers, then the whole expanse would be like Mercator's. And if we look at the range to the northwest on Baum's map, we see it says Land of Ev. Could that be short for Land of Eve? Or Land of Adam and Eve? What was Adam and Eve's land? Why, the Garden of Eden, of course. We see no land, merry land, low land, high land. No land reminds me of Netherlands. The Netherlands, right? The no lands. Merry land reminds me of merry old England. And low land, high land reminds me of Holland, which is in the Netherlands. Like he's making sure to make the connection that this land of Oz is near northern Europe. Impassable desert, great sandy waste, deadly desert, and shifting sands. Doesn't sound too friendly, does it? Sounds kind of treacherous, in fact. Well, we did hear how the indrawing seas are dangerous. We learned that King Arthur lost five of twelve ships on that voyage. So the sand rivers are indeed dangerous. So chances are pretty good that Baum was an adept. Now here's a slight variation to Baum's map. In this version, the Black Mountain in the center of Mercator's map is represented as a green mountain on this one. Was the Black Mountain green at one time? Does green represent when it was alive and black when it turned to ash? Notice a straight yellow line through Munchkin country called the Yellow Brick Road. This Yellow Brick Road is in the same location as the red and white barber pole line going to the center of Mercator's map. Are they telling us something here? To get to the center, you must follow this path. From this particular aisle of the four aisles, is there a route? And it's a barber pole. Right, for the North Pole. Here we get a better look at Emerald City. Notice how the green mountain is composed of vertical columns. And an even better look here in this depiction. Isn't that an odd way to draw a city? Notice the mountains on the right, high steep walls, like the mountains encircling the North Pole. And notice the field of flowers here. We, they always show flowers. And they're reddish, right? Here's another depiction with a rainbow overhead. A rainbow at 42 degrees in the shape of the dome that it is reflecting off of. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, and the dreams that you dreamed of, once in a lullaby. Now in early 2016, a YouTube vid came out called No Forests on Flat Earth, where the presenter told us that Devil's Tower in Wyoming is actually a giant tree cut. A tree stump. And if we look closer at the side of the mountain, we see it is comprised of vertical columns, which is just like the depiction of Emerald City, except this mountain is no longer green. Was it a tree that was cut? 
and turn to black like the mountain in the center at the North Pole? Look how enormous Devil's Tower is! Can you see the tiny images of people climbing it? I took a road trip last summer and got to observe Devil's Tower firsthand. Here are some pics I took. I wanted to see if indeed Devil's Tower looked like a tree cut or if somehow it could have been formed by lava as mainstream science would have us believe. Notice here that this is from a few miles away, but I could actually see it from the highway at least 30 miles away. It's that big. It is an anomaly. There is no other structure like it around compared to the full-grown trees at the bottom. You can see how big it is compared to the trees. It's crazy big. And the closer I got, the more it confirmed to me that this was a giant tree stump. Now the local Indians still consider the area around Devil's Tower as sacred. They actually have their own name for it, being Mateo Tipi, which literally means Bear's House. Now we know bears love trees, so the Indians thought this was a tree also. Here you can see the sign asking people not to disturb the prayer bundles. Here's one of those. And here in the tree, they also tied ceremonial ribbons. From at its base, looking out across the land, you can see how there are no other features even remotely similar to Devil's Tower. And we can't help but notice the name change is to something demonic. Devil's Tower. Oz's Tower. I even heard a couple we walked by talking about how it looked like a tree to them. They want us to believe it was made from lava, but there was no evidence of lava. What we could see was what looked like a giant petrified tree. Look at this mini stump we walked by. This is a tree stump. You can tell how similar it looks to Devil's Tower. And this tree stump, too, was right on the path walking around the tower. And a quick side note and crazy coincidence. On our way to Devil's Tower, I got pulled over for speeding right outside of the town called Rosette. No kidding. I really did. This really happened. Rosette almost got a ticket in Rosette. Haha. -ha. But the highway patrolman was very nice and only gave me a warning. Now right before we went to Devil's Tower, we stopped off at Yellowstone National Park and I was very surprised to find evidence of basalt columns here as well. Here's a close-up. And of the pieces that have sloughed off. Remember, petrified wood looks like rock. Like here, this was officially a petrified tree they fenced off in the park for visitors to check out. You can see how it is fossilized, hardened. And even sectioned off. So is it so hard to imagine having a giant tree in the center that could be similar to these at the North Pole? Are they showing us this black mountain in the films of today? Like in the show The 100? Like in Stephen King's series called The Gunslinger? Here the Black Mountain is called the Tower. Devil's Tower? Like in The Lord of the Rings? Here the Black Mountain is called Mount Doom. Notice the base of Mount Doom. Doesn't it look like Devil's Tower before the trunk was cut? Doom. Devil. Like in the depiction of the Tower of Babel? Is the tower cut? Now Devil's Tower? Is that why it was once green and now is black? It does resemble a tree stump, doesn't it? On the cover of The Economist for 2017, they show this same Devil's Tower. 
Notice how the people on the cover make a yellow brick road to the mountain. Notice what looks like water. The four indrawing seas. And notice the high mountains on the perimeter, just like what Mercator and Baum depicts. And who is that figure? He is in a red robe, holding a light in his right hand, illuminating the world, and a spear in his other hand. Just like Arthur here in red, holding a spear. And he would be directly above this cut tree, right? So this shows us the North Pole is what is being depicted on the Economist cover. And the Yellow Brick Road is also connected to King Arthur. Baram Blackett and Alan Wilson write in their book Arturius Rex Discovered that Camelot can be broken down into Ka for care, fortress, and Malo, which is a corruption of the Welsh word melon for yellow. So Camelot means yellow fort. Wilson states, up in Lisvane, closer to our yellow fort, we find an old road name as Pen Ear Hello Felon, which is quite literally Head of the Road Yellow. It reminds us of the Wizard of Oz with the song and tale of following the yellow brick road. Now isn't that interesting? They said it, not me. So we have Arthur and Dorothy following a yellow brick road. What are the chances? And if the yellow brick road leads to Caramelon, or the yellow fort, otherwise known as Camelot, is Camelot a symbol of the true Emerald City? That city being the Garden of Eden? The yellow brick road ends in a spiral. Remember that Mercator mentions that at the Black Mountain is a whirlpool that encircles the mountain. A spiral is a whirlpool. The whirlpool encircling the Black Mountain. And what is directly above the Black Mountain? Again, the constellation known as Arthur. King Arthur directly above in the sky. And like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, who gets to the center of the maze called Emerald City, we have Dolores in Westworld seeking the center of the maze in her world as well. Dorothy, Dolores, the names are very similar. And in the sci-fi series called The Magicians, they show Arthur's Round Table promptly behind the Master Magicians or Master Wizards, right? The Wizards of Oz. Notice too in the Magicians they have a magical place called Fillory and is located at the Northern Marsh. So in the north and looks similar to Emerald City. Another interesting note is that Mercator wrote of little people who inhabited the North Pole. On one of the large islands he mentions that here live pygmies at almost four feet tall who are like those called scraylings in Greenland. Reminds me of the munchkins in the Wizard of Oz. Notice the red, green, and blue of their clothing. Now notice these three pygmies clothing. One wears a green skirt, one red, and one blue. Is this photo staged? Is this man an adept? I wouldn't be surprised. Except for these pygmies are black. Now Arthur, Norwegians, Masons from Catherine's court, most likely were white, being in Northern Europe. So no mention of their skin color was given by Mercator. And that would make sense if they were white. If they were black, then he most definitely would mention their skin color. So what do you think? Is the evidence piling up? The only way to know definitely if this is true is to take a trip there. 
That would be amazing. But for now, we can keep digging for more evidence. Stay tuned for my part four where I do just that. Take care and Yahweh bless. What is matter of sulfur? I'm afraid you've made rather a bad enemy of the wicked witch of the West. The sooner you get out of Oz altogether, the safer you sleep, my dear. Oh, I'd give anything to get out of Oz altogether. But which is the way back to Kansas? I can't go the way I came. No, that's true. The only person who might know would be the great and wonderful Wizard of Oz himself. The Wizard of Oz? Is he good or is he wicked? Oh, very good, but very mysterious. He lives in the Emerald City, and that's a long journey from here. Did you bring your broomstick with you? No, I'm afraid I didn't. Well, then, you'll have to walk. The Munchkins will see you safely to the border of Munchkin Land. And remember, never let those ruby slippers off your feet for a moment, or you will be at the mercy of the Wicked Witch of the West. But how do I start for Emerald City? It's always best to start at the beginning, and all you do is follow the yellow brick road. Just follow the yellow brick road. My, people come and go so quickly here. Follow the yellow brick road. Brick Road? Follow the yellow brick road. 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 Follow, 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 follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick, follow the yellow brick, follow the yellow brick road. Because, 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 because of the wonderful things he does. You're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz.